There's a new feature in Wireshark version 1.10 called HTTP.time. This one alone is worth the update. Let's take a look. If you, like me, have dealt with users, you've probably heard the age old saying, the network is slow. For example, let's say we have Bob and Bob's going out through the internet to several different websites out there and he starts complaining that the network is slow. Now, is it just one site? Is it all sites? What exactly is he doing while he's going to those sites? Those are really good questions to ask. One of the new features in Wireshark version 110 is a field called HTTP time and if we leverage that, we can capture data and it will actually calculate for us the delays between the actual request for HTTP and the response that comes back. So here's what we get to do in this Micronugget. We'll go ahead and jump on this machine. We'll open up several different websites out on the internet. We'll capture it all and then we'll put that HTTP.time field to work for us as a new column which makes it super easy to sort. So let's grab this Windows 8 machine. He should be on VLAN 10. We'll just do an IP config real quick just to verify. Sure enough, he's on the 172.16.10 subnet. Fantastic. His host ID is 2. Let's launch Wireshark on this guy and start the capture on its Ethernet interface. We'll minimize that and then we'll go ahead and visit some websites. Now, by default, my browser is set to go to google.com. So there's one website that loaded pretty quickly. Let's also go out to cisco.com. And let's also open up a tab for juniper.net. I know they'll love that. And let's do one more for Microsoft. So we'll bring up microsoft.com. Fantastic. So Cisco's already loaded. That's great. Google only took a very quick amount of time. Cisco's loaded. It looks like Juniper is still loading and so is Microsoft. Now, how long are these taking <laughs> between the actual request and the responses that come back? Now, fortunately, we have the packet capture running and we can use that new field of HTTP.time to go ahead and tell us exactly the delay between the request and the actual response. So let's open up Wireshark. We've got about 5,000 packets there. We'll go ahead and stop this capture. And now the trick is, how do we see that delay? One of the simplest ways of seeing this is to go to some HTTP response like this guy right here, or we could also search. We could use a display filter to search for HTTP and simply open it up. And right here is the HTTP.time field. And this says the time since the request was 0 0.095 seconds, or as his friends call them, 95 milliseconds, which is not too bad. Now, the other cool thing is this. If we wanted to confirm what is the name of that field, all we need to do is highlight it and it will show us right down here in the status bar. It'll say that is the field called HTTP.time. And if we wanted to add that as a new column up here so we could sort on it, look at this. All we need to do is right click on this field and say, I want to go ahead and apply as column and poof, it's done. We now have that time since request. If we want to find out who are the biggest offenders from an HTTP perspective based on the request and the final response coming in, all we need to do is sort based on this column. So we can right click here, say, I want to sort descending. I want the big numbers on top and then simply use this icon to go to the very first packet. And I'm going to space it out just a little bit to make it a little easier to read. I'm also going to hide the length column just temporarily. So I'll say hide that column so we can focus on the time since request and take a look at this. This one request took 16 seconds. That's a lifetime for that response to come in. And if we wanted to dig down deeper and say, okay, which one exactly was that? We can simply look at the layer three information. For example, the IP address that was 23.6.102.235. This guy right here, right click and say, you know what? Resolve that name. So what this is showing us is that Whichever of those companies, Google, Cisco, Juniper, or Microsoft, whichever one was using this as their hosting service or caching service to deliver the content, it took quite a while for the delivery, 16 full seconds for the delivery of a graphic file that was coming down to the browser. Now, if we wanted to dig a little bit deeper and say, okay, whose content is that really? We could open this up, scroll down a little bit. We can go take a look at the original request, which was in frame 3718. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that to jump there. And it appears based on the request that we were dealing with Microsoft that took so long to show up in the browser. It also is showing us here what the actual image was. So it appears to be a graphic regarding a new phone. That's what the actual file name is. And just because I'm curious, if we wanted to go look at that 
Because it's in the capture file, we could look at that just by going up to File, Export Objects, HTTP, and simply find that file, the new phone BG0513, which if we scroll through this, if it is Microsoft, that was my last page I went to, and there it is right there. So if we want to actually see that graphic, because it's already part of our capture, all we need to do is say Save As. I'll save it in this Wireshark folder, and I'll use the same name for it. Click on Save, and then simply go open it up, and we can take a look at it. Another way of seeing it is just go look at the browser. It's probably still sitting there. So if we open up the browser, we go to Microsoft, and it looks like we have, oh, there we go, right there. That is the new phone. That is the graphic that is very likely the one that took so long to download. And that might be okay because they might have, you know, started on this page and then the background slowly fed in the additional graphics for the second, third, and fourth for the splash screens. So it very well could be that the user wouldn't have even noticed that that graphic took so long to show up if that graphic wasn't going to be displayed for quite some time. In this micro nugget, we've looked at a new feature called HTTP.time that's in version 1.10 and greater of Wireshark that calculates for us the delta or the delay between an HTTP request and the actual response that comes back in. We also took a look at how easy it is to make that a new column in Wireshark so we can go ahead and start sorting based on that column. For more information on how to put Wireshark to use in your environment, come and check out our CBT Nugget series on Wireshark. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.